Okay, y'all, welcome back to the next video. So in this video, again, we're just gonna keep talking about the start. And I actually kind of want to talk a little bit, actually, like I think, again, for newer players, I said this in an early video, but I think in, in for new players, it's basically always good to practice the raiding, even though it might always, I, th I think there's some cases where you don't actually want to raid, but I think that for newer players, it's always good to just practice raiding just to get that extra, you know, just practice playing a little bit faster in the beginning. Um, because I know a lot of people, they just play super defensive in the beginning, and it's it really, I think, prevents them from becoming a better player, because I think Deathmatch is all, like, in the beginning, it's all about playing fast, and if you play slow, then I think it's just not so good. So, anyways, let's talk about some places where maybe you don't want to actually make the stables in the beginning. So, as I mentioned in one of the earliest videos, basically the stables, we, we make them in the beginning just to make the, you know, if we get Paladin, we make them to make Paladin, but, like, in some cases, we don't actually get good, good cavalry, but we're still making the cavalry to to raid so where is that um where is that a um good and where is that potentially not so good so let's say again we're koreans so we don't get good cavalry and um we're against maybe well, it's a korean mirror right and okay and and this and you know the thing is with koreans is like other people some people just don't like to raid like they just would much rather play defensive and then try to build up castles and all that stuff right but let's say we're Korean and we and we do decide to raid. If we raid and we kill, well, we're building stables first. So they're building barracks first. Remember, if they're not raiding, they're not going to build stables because the cavalry aren't going to have much use of them. And and so for us, these stables have use for us so much so far as the raiding goes, right? But compared to somebody that just plays defensive, like early on, they'll have two two buildings up that are they'll have two more buildings up than we will that are going to be worth worthwhile in the long run whereas these two stables are not going to be worthwhile we have to get the value for these stables early on because if we don't they're not going to be really that great for us later on so in order for us to get the value for these two stables we're likely going to have to kill or at least idle them significantly with the cavaliers here right so we're definitely going to be looking for two villager picks at at the least basically in order to make these stables worth it right because if we kill two villagers then those two villagers aren't going to be able to go but aren't going to be around to be able to build future buildings so we might actually be able to catch up in the production despite having started with the two stables which we're not going to use later on um so so that's good um but there are definitely some cases where um we're not going to want to go for the stables so uh, i'm thinking of against huns like if you're playing um koreans against huns right huns are going to want to go for the paladins in the beginning right they're not going to want to go just straight cat archer help right in most cases um and so if they're going to go for stables and they're going for paladins and we're going for stables and we're going for cavaliers if we're playing against an equally matched opponent right then if we're both raiding at the same time they're probably going to get more value out of the stables than we are because their paladins produce faster plus their paladins are stronger than our cavalier so while it is possible that we are able to get picks on their on their villagers right and, and we are able to slow them down in that regard it's likely that if they're an equally matched opponent, they're going to do just as well, or at least we should be able to assume at least that they're going to do just as well as as we are, and they're going to be able to kill as many villages as we are. And what that's going to mean, or more, or more, because they have stronger paladins. And what that what that's going to mean is that now, since they're actually using the paladins later on, they have two more production buildings than us. Like not only are they probably going to do better on the rating, but now they have two more production buildings than us. Um, and so we're really not at a we're we're still like we're we're at a disadvantage now because we have two less production buildings. We're slower on our production, and because we started with two stables, and also they probably did a better job rating this, right? I would argue that it's probably better to just open with barracks in that particular case, because if we open with barracks, we're able to get helps out faster, which will help us defend against the early paladins. And again, maybe I don't really play a defensive a whole lot so i can't talk a whole lot about like how successful you know you should be able to be playing defensive against somebody that that opens paladins like that but i, I suspect that if you practice enough playing defensive that you probably can prevent most of your villagers from dying if you open with the two barracks helps and um and you're not having to focus on raiding again this isn't this is gonna if you don't raid it's basically gonna guarantee that they get a, a, a perf you know basically a uh a perfect start in terms of like their building productions and stuff like that at least if they're a really good player right but but if we had gone for the raid 
that relative to them, we wouldn't have really been better off by going for the stables. I mean, of course there's cases where, yes, we're a better raider or, or, or whatever, right? But the, the reality is if we're playing against equally matched opponents, we're not gonna be better off by going for the, the stable approach. If anything, they'll be better off, right? Um, under most circumstances. So that's just kind of something to think about with going for the stables in the beginning. Again, it's not something I think I still recommend going for the stables in the beginning just to practice, you know, um, just to get the games in. But as you get better and better, it might be one of those things where you kind of think like, how good is their ratings? Uh, you know, how how good of a civ am I? You know, compared to that, compared to them in terms of rating, you know, what's the matchup look like? And again, if if it's if they're a much better rating civ than you, then Maybe it just play, makes more sense to play defensive, especially again if you're not going to use the stables. The stables aren't going to be useful later on. They're better rating civ. Might just be better to skip the stables altogether and then just go for start thinking about how many barracks do I need, how many ranges do I need, how many castles do I need, how many siege workshops, that kind of stuff, right? So, yeah, that's something I actually wasn't. You know, I was pretty set on raiding. I've always liked to raid and stuff like that because I've always felt like it's given me a nice advantage over other players. But I really had to think about it today, you know, and uh, that's kind of the conclusion I came up with, which. Not really worth it if you, uh, if you, um, depending on the Civ matchup, if you're against an equally matched opponent, right? So, uh, yeah. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, okay, is after you get all these buildings up, right? What's kind of the next, what's the next, uh, next thing on the agenda? And by the way, I would say that I definitely missed out on making some buildings here, so for sure. What you'd want to do as well when getting all these buildings up is you'd also want to get up some monastery. So ideally these actually want to be in the back of your base instead of just like right in the front like this. But um, you want to get some monastery monasteries out because the monasteries, like there's relics on the map and relics in the beginning aren't like super essential because the amount of gold they give you is not really that much compared to what you can obtain just through villagers. But Later on in the game, they can be very essential because the gold runs out, and the person that has a lot more, if the one person has a lot more relics, then they're going to be able to produce gold units, and the other one won't, and the game will likely favor the player that has the relics. So getting monasteries out quickly is quite can be important. Um, you might ask like, why do you make three three monasteries? And the reason why you make three monasteries is just because it's that important that you get those monasteries um, up that quickly, because especially now with the shift queuing it's very easy to get relics. So I'll show you in a second, I'll show you guys in a second where, um, how, why it's so easy to get relics. But, um, but yeah. Um, the other thing you wanna check on is the market. So usually if, I think like theoretically, basically the market is probably worth taking in most games, just because if you're able to use the market, like in most cases, like using the market is viable because you do either have extra wood, food, or like stone, because maybe you don't make castle units. Um, and so having that extra gold allows you to maintain the production of gold units throughout um, the early games of deathmatch, and that can actually be, be very important in certain Civ matchups. And um, it allows you to like transition into like it allows you to just constantly produce gold units because you'll have the extra gold to produce military units, and then by the time your gold runs out, you already have enough villagers on gold to keep producing those units. And so it really is it's a really nice thing. If you don't take the market, a lot of games you just end up like losing out on one of the like. You end up losing, um, you end up running out of gold, and you have to wait a little while before your eco kicks in to start producing like the gold units again, like through with all your buildings. So, um, but make, making the market, um, I'm not necessarily advising to take the market because I think that it's better practice to try to get more value out of the units you have than it is to take the market right away, um, because I think the market can give like it over, it can has, has the ability to overwhelm lower rated players and even higher rated players. And so I think it's one of those things that if you're really trying to improve, try to avoid taking the market. Um, but if you're trying to play more serious, um, start thinking about how can you, you know, what resource, resources do I need to sell in order to, to make sure I can maintain constant production of my composition. And that's something that I haven't really put a lot of thought into yet. And I'll definitely get to in future videos. But um, uh, yeah, definitely something. The reason why you want to make it in the beginning is again um, like this is that you want to see if they took it because the way you play is like if they took market you're going to play differently than if they didn't take market um, and that's just because if you're put if you're putting like in a really aggressive push on and you didn't take the market and then they take the market 
then they might actually be able to overwhelm you with the number of gold units they are, that 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 they can make. You might not expect them to be able to make so many paladins or or or, or siege units or whatever, right? And by making the market in the beginning, it just allows you to at least check to see like are these guys going for it? And at the very least, like you're probably going to need the market later on. So it's not it's not doesn't hurt to make it in the beginning really. So um, usually when people actually do take the market though, they make it like right away in the beginning, like one of the first buildings they make. But um, for this, just kind of this general opening like this, I just like to make it as like one of my last buildings actually, just to see if they took it. And then also, um, again, if you were playing at like a really high level and they didn't take the market at this point, then the late market is, can be really strong because it gives you the advantages of being able to defend really well or raid really well, but then also having the strength of the market behind it. So. Um, making the market at this point at the very least still makes sense and it, you could even argue make maybe make the market before even these monasteries because it's that important like getting a late market can be very very strong um, again because you have the advantages of the raid or the defense plus the market versus like what a lot of times nowadays in deathmatch tournaments you have to go for the market basically as one of your first buildings otherwise you risk not getting it you, you know you just won't get it right um, so yeah um, I don't know how I necessarily feel about this castle. I, I just didn't really put much thought into putting it down. And I don't, or so I'm not going to analyze it because I'm not really sure if that's a really good position or not. I'd just say, like in general, probably don't put castles like too close to your base because if you do, then your units just get there's no room for your units to mass up. They just kind of all clump up in your base. So probably don't put a castle like right next to your base. But try to get a little a little ways out. Um, your first couple castles, but definitely getting castles to defend kind of your main bases can be nice um, <clears throat> and um, don't forget to keep making houses though despite having already built all the military buildings make sure you have this is a big place where I always get housed is that I build all the military buildings but I'd stop making houses for some reason I start expanding on the TC's and I think like okay well I get the population space from the TC TC space only gives you the same population space as a house so it doesn't give you that much population space you definitely need to keep making houses and even if you're making castles or town centers, so keep always keep a couple of villagers building houses just so you can maintain production here. Um, and then with your extra villagers, again, try to expand. Try to get um, you know these villagers in the beginning. You know, it's you know there's not a lot. The military is starting to mass up, but a lot of it's just massing up at the base, right? There's a lot of free area here that people are you know usually don't have any military units. And getting a castle up here, even like it seems weird, like sending like in a random map game, you'd never send one villager to build a castle, really. Um, but in deathmatch, like there's a good chance that you can actually get castles up on hills like this, um, and um, with just one villager. Sometimes they get picked off, but um, other times they don't. And if you get a castle up here with just one villager early on, um, it can be really very nice. So um, the main places you're going to want to put castles in the beginning are going to be um, locations that secure the extra golds of the map. So like here, like this is an extra gold. So getting a castle, like this would be like the perfect spot, but I don't think you can. It would be really cool though. But um, getting a castle like maybe here-ish or something like that, just to secure in front of this gold spot would be nice. Um, another gold, extra gold here, so getting a castle over here, and then maybe a town center on the gold is nice. Again, this secures this extra gold is, is very good. Um, you usually want to get a castle on your main gold, uh, and this is just to prevent like raids. Because again, people can mass a lot of army in the beginning, and so it's not it's not unusual that somebody makes like 20, 30 paladins and then just comes to your gold spots and then raids your you know your your golds. Uh, it, it can happen. And so if you have a castle here on your near your extra your your main gold, then it protects the you know 30 or so villagers that'll be mining gold in the beginning of the game. Other places are just again just general hills protecting your your extra resources. So in this case, you know you can ma maybe don't have a, you don't if you build a castle somewhere near your extra gold here or your main gold here, then maybe you don't need a castle near here. It's kind of like you should be able to maybe defend this fine, um, but maybe still have like a gold a castle out here. This would defend this gold here, um, and then anywhere you have like um, like anywhere there's like hills near your town center. So like in this case, there's not really many to be honest. Like you probably want to get control of this area here because this like <clears throat> the cliff actually gives you a hill bonus here if you're on the cliff and then you're shooting down here. So I want to try to establish control of this area so they can't like attack from here. But um, but yeah, this hill is here is fine. Could have gone here with the castle as well. Um, 
but yeah, you gotta be a little bit too, be a little bit careful because better players are gonna start patrolling units out this way. So if you have your castles too close to their base, then the villagers are probably gonna die. And the problem is, is that if you start building and like two seconds later they kill the villager, then like they're just gonna kill the castle and you're gonna lose all the stones. So I'd probably advise against like playing too aggressive with the castles right away because it can be risky and cost you a lot of stone. But but definitely um, try to get some important positions. Um, again, it depends how they're playing. If they're going for like the castle unit right away, you're going to have a lot more freedom to take map control, so you can play a little bit more aggressive. Versus if you're um, if you're the one going for castle units right away, then usually your castles are going to be in your base, and then you're going to have to wait to expand to other areas. But you know, sometimes you can still expand out and sneak castles in like these pretty good spots, and it's really nice. Because again, later on, when they have more military units and they have more uh, map presence, it's going to be a lot harder to sneak ex that same castle in this area here. It's going to be much harder. Um, so I guess that kind of covers that. And um, as far as town centers go, you probably want to get somewhere between like um, six and maybe like nine town centers down. Um, that just allows you to, you're going to want two town centers on your main goal. That's going to allow you to saturate the main gold very quickly. Again, your gold's going to be a limiting resource usually, like very early on. So you want to make sure you get town centers on your golds. So two are going to go on your main gold. One will go on your extra golds, on each extra gold, so four. And then um, you can go like five here on a wood line, uh, or, or five here on stone and wood, maybe six, seven, castle here. <coughs> if you get an extra gold, eight, if you get another extra gold, nine, you know. Um, and then I'd probably queue out. I'd probably max. I'd probably max out the queues on the gold mines. But you want to be careful that you don't max out the queues. You don't always want to max out the queues on the other on the other town centers. And this is because like early on, again, you have a lot of resources. And this is something I just learned actually recently from another player named Zareb. Just throwing some credit out there for him. But you actually have, like I said, after you ma you spend all your gold, you still will often have a lot of wood and food, and gold will just be the limiting resource. <laughs> and so you basically have two options in terms of military. You either wait for the gold to come in to produce military, or you make a lot of trash units. Um, and so trash units can be okay sometimes. The problem is, is that they're not like super amazing when it comes to pushing. Like they can be good, but but like they. If you match them, like if you make an army full of like extra units, uh, if you make an army and all the extra units are trash, and then like somebody else has an army and all the extra units are gold, then the gold army is probably gonna win if they if they they make the right units. And so the thing is, like yes, making a lot of extra trash might actually help you <coughs> push some positions early on, but unless those positions are crucial, um, what the enemy can do is they can just wait um, behind like more essential castles and stuff like that or whatever, mass up a gold army. And like now, all of a sudden, they're gonna win the fight, and they're gonna win whatever the, the fight, like the next fight they take is. And it's like you're kind of caught in this awkward position because you, you maybe you're like you're like pop capped because you made all these trash units, right? You max out your pop by using all your extra wood and food on trash units, and they, you know, give up map control, a little bit of map control probably, but now they have a stronger army with gold units and you know you're gonna lose the fight because you know their army's better and you have the gold now maybe to make the better unit but you don't have the pop space anymore because you have all these trash units and so it's like you know sometimes you can take a decent fight still with the trash units but you know there's other cases where you just get totally you lose all the map control that you gained with the trash units and then may maybe even more so you know because the thing is is that they don't have to fight you on like a bad position or they can only they can fight you like they could fight you like um, as you're pushing uphill, and and they could still. And usually, if you're pushing uphill, you're not taking like an amazing trade in most cases, and so they just fight you there as long as it's efficient for them, and then they fall back. <coughs> they mass up a better gold army, and then they just destroy you on the next fight because they have the gold efficient army, right? And then the problem is, is that like again, maybe you can defend later on with your gold units, or whatever. You can defend with, you know, maybe after the trash units get wiped out or whatever, you can defend with your gold units. But now you you actually lost like cost of you lost resources because you lost all your helps for a lot less value than they did when they were defending. Um, but anyways, as this relates back to like not making too many villagers, is the thing is is that yes, there's gonna be a point usually in the beginning where you run out of gold, 
and you're not pop capped. You have maybe 150 population, 120, 130, something like that, right? Your town centers are up. You're starting to make villagers and stuff like that. And now you can either, to fill out your pop cap, you have like three options. You can either mass a lot of trash units. You can either make town center or make villagers from all your town centers and basically max out like a bunch of your villagers. Or you can just wait for more gold. You can wait for the gold to come in and just make more gold units. And so this is kind of what I think. So I think making a lot of extra villagers is not a good idea because usually, again, you have the wood and food to be able to produce more military. And if you just max out your pop and villagers, then you will reach the number of villagers you want in the long run. But the problem is you're floating all these extra resources and you run the risk of somebody just having a much big, bigger army than you that will just end up wiping you out and taking a lot better trades. Like having a lot of extra villagers is great, but the problem is, is that if they're taking a lot better trades with their larger army, then you basically need the villagers in order to even trade like efficiently kind of because you're getting you're losing so much extra resources in the bad fights that you have to have all the extra villagers to compensate for it. So and the problem is too is that if you're losing gold units, then like like yes you're able to with all your extra villagers you're able to compensate for the army you're losing for your the army you're losing by make you know because you have extra eco but the problem is this gold is going to be it's going to run out eventually and then once the gold runs out like they're going to have more gold left over because they took better fights like better um, gold um they're going to take more uh cost efficient fights so they have more gold left over and then they just have to get their villager numbers up and then they overrun you so I know that may be hard to explain, understand, so if you didn't understand that part, then I wouldn't say you need to review it now, but like later on. But anyways, what I'm saying is, is that it's just good to get on gold so that you can get your gold up so you can mass your gold units, but don't overexpand into trash or population or in villagers. Um, unless like with the trash, you're taking like an essential location. So like let's say they're forward gold this year, and you know if you make a lot more trash here, you can actually take them off this gold. That can be okay. Because now they're not able to mass up the gold units as efficiently because they they lost the extra gold here. But let's say you know they just have castles out here and you know you're like oh I'm just gonna make all this trash units I'm gonna overrun them at this castle. Okay great. But if they have a castle here and then they can hold you off long enough here to mass up gold units, then they're gonna be able to push you back here, reclaim the position here probably, and then you're gonna be down um, food and wood later on because you made all the trash units, right? So that's just kind of an argument to maybe don't try to get to 130 villagers right away. Maybe just kind of sit around like 60, 80 villagers and just max out your pop and gold units and then attack. Um, again, it's going to feel weird because it's like you're just sitting around sometimes, but it, yeah, it, it, it'll pay it, Sometimes it can pay off. Again, it's kind of a situational thing. And then as far as like, again, the villagers go, like the only way that making a lot of extra villagers is going to be worth it is if you're spending the resources so quickly that you really need the villagers to con you, you need those extra villagers to be able to keep producing army and it's unlikely in most cases that you're you're using um you're losing resources that fast and you're still trading efficiently like usually if you're losing a lot of units like right away that's probably because you're just sacrificing them all to like a castle or something in which case that's not good for you because now you're just wasting a lot of resources early on like you might be getting your 120 villagers high faster but you're not doing that much better overall because of it so, um, and especially like, again, in that case, if you're going for a lot of villagers, if you are wasting units, hopefully the units you're wasting are trash. Cause again, we said, if you're wasting gold units, you're going to run out of gold eventually, and it's just not going to be good. So, um, but yeah, going for villagers is always fine. As long as you're taking cost efficient fights, like if you're losing lots of units, but they're still cost efficient, like straight up cost efficient, not like, like, not like they're cost efficient. Cause I have 120 villagers and they have 80 villagers. I'm talking like they're basically like one for one or whatever. And that's fine. You can throw your units as fast as possible, you know, if you, if you can do that. But again, that really requires a lot of, that usually requires like very good unit control. But if you have the good unit control and you can take cost efficient fights, then I would, I would definitely recommend continue to fight and just build economy. And then with the hope that maybe they don't go as fast as you do. But in general, I'd say for most beginning players, at least, or just most players in general, you should just wait until you have the, either make trash units to push essential locations or wait until you have like defend wait till you have enough gold units to be able to push effectively <coughs> excuse me yeah my voice is running out because i've been talking like this for like five hours um so yeah so i still paused here which is insane but all right so so yeah we're just gonna expand the count here 
Again, the houses, the location of the houses doesn't really matter as much at this point. Um, but yeah, like I said, get, try to get your um, spots going here. Is there a place we can build it? This is like fine. I don't know. It's not a deal, but whatever. We said a castle out here would be good. And again, making sure. Making sure we can expand here. You don't need to go on stone usually early on, so don't don't worry about that, I would say. I don't know why this village is taking a long way. But yeah, just queue out the queue out the buildings. And then you can just set the waypoints for it as well. Okay, so one thing I want to show you guys is how to micro the monks. So once the monastery is built, what you want to do, create the monk, set the waypoint there chill. Or you can select all the monasteries. If, if you catch them when all the monasteries are built at the same time, then it's actually better. Just wait till all the monasteries are done usually. But you just go like select a relic, then deselect, select a relic, deselect, select a relic. In this case I'm house still. Because again, these villagers probably stopped building houses. Yes, exactly. So again, you don't necessarily need to set villagers on, on uh, on all the town centers, just the gold, get the gold ones up fast. And I think I forgot to build a town center somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Just focus on getting the gold built. Again, you get the traps going here, or whatever. Okay, so another thing. Eh, actually, I think maybe I should end the video here. Because we've already kind of established everything here. Oh, oh, yeah, let's talk about the monks thing. Okay, so the monks get created here. I think one of them got created. So yeah, so once the monks get created, once like if you, once you set the waypoint, this monk is going to this location. All right, and if you guys know about the shift queuing, again, what you can use is the shift. You can use the shift queuing to your advantage. As soon as you see the monk come out, which by the way you can monitor up here with the queuing thing, or you can just listen for the monk noise. Once the monk comes out, just hold shift and then send the monk back to the monastery. The monk's already going here, so the ex you're just when you're holding shift, it just adds the extra command of going back to the monastery. Then the monk's going to grab the relic, come back to the monastery. And then to do one further, you could actually click, hold shift, click back to the monastery, and then go to one of the relics that you didn't actually set a waypoint for in the beginning, and then go there, and then go there. And now this relic, this monk is going to go here, collect the relic, go back, go here, collect the relic, go back. I mean, maybe you don't get this one, maybe the monk dies, or maybe they take it before you do, but in this way, you should be able to gather the relics quite quickly. Again, here's another monk here. Again, I'm not really listening for the monks, but just shift Q, grab the relic. I think this was maybe another one. Grab the relic, go back. And there was one more somewhere, but I have no idea where he's at. Is this one? <coughs> yeah, I don't know where he's at. All right. You should actually set your initial TC probably like a wood line or something or a gold line instead of like the actual TC bot. Alright. Um, and then Yeah, that's kinda of that. I mean that's kinda of how the monks go. Um, the one thing I didn't mention in the beginning is that once you start massing up military in the beginning and you've um, and it's not like they're raiding very much in, anymore. What you want to do is send all your army out, and usually you want to patrol some of your army to the front. It depends on the map again. If all your golds are in the front, then you want to you want to protect the front. So patrolling everything out the front is the usually a good way to go. But it, let's say your map is relatively safe, like mine is here, then what you can do is you can patrol some of the army out front here, and then patrol like f five or six units here on the side. It doesn't really matter a whole lot what your units are. Probably not. Don't patrol siege units, but patrolling like just you know a couple helps, a couple paladin or something like that's fine. And then a couple units out this side. And again, that just prevents them because if, if you guys noticed, again, I was sending. I thought I sent a villager here. I guess I sniped it. They sniped it. But <clears throat> by sending the military out, it'll help protect your villagers a little bit better, which I could have used right here. But also, it snipes their villagers if they're going for like a castle. Like it's probably seems pretty likely that they would probably go for it, try to go for a castle here. So again, sending the military out to you know walk along this path here. Maybe you catch the villager going this way, right? Um. So, yeah, the other thing actually I think is quite good, and it's something I I don't really do, right? I haven't been doing recently, is that when you do make castles out here like this, like, let's say we're going to make a castle out here, 
it seems like they made a castle there, so maybe go back here instead or something. I don't know. But actually making the outpost first is quite good because <coughs> we'll see in a second here. Well, I can just go over here. I don't know. But making the outpost, like the vision it gives you, is really quite good. And the thing is, is that if, like, if you're making up over a castle over here and you're just making it blind, like you don't see anything. Like the villager has like the smallest line of sight ever. It's probably worth like the extra 10 seconds or whatever to make the outpost. And then you get a vision of like all this area here. So if you see that they're making a castle like right next to you, which actually happens quite often, then you just send military over to kill it, right? Versus like, okay, I didn't see that they were making a castle here and they got theirs up faster than mine and now they're just going to trap it down. If you make the outpost, you're going to have the vision there before they, you know, maybe before they even see you. You have the time to go over and kill the villager. That's something that's, I think, a pretty underrated move. I don't really see it a whole lot, but I think it's quite, excuse me, quite good. Jeez. So yeah, and then again, it's just, it's a matter of just unit control and then patrolling or whatever. He's actually a squirrel lead, that's sad. But yeah, you can see now that, um, and then again, just try to queue, make sure you get the golds queued up and uh, try to take the extra golds of town centers and, and whatever. But uh, you've seen, I think the monks grabbed the, some of the relics here. I think one of them must have died probably going to that one. I thought I had a monk going to that. Again, just check the relics over time. And you might want to also check these waypoints. Some of these waypoints get pretty pretty nasty. Like this is over queued probably. It's probably okay. I just sent some of them over here or something like that. But yeah, I've already collected two relics. I wasn't even paying attention. I literally was not paying any attention to these. Like I, I did what I did, but I, I've been talking this whole time and I've been pausing a million times and I still collected these relics. It's crazy. It's how fast you get them. And again, they're going to be essential. They can be really essential later on. <laughs> in this particular case, there's just be more helps here because they're just going crazy with the cavalry. I don't know. Let's see what they're doing. This is, what was is this? You kill the range, but then you let it live, and then you. I don't understand. <clears throat> I like how they prioritize the monk. Um, yeah, look at the look at the vision here. Look at the vision here. This is just from this one, this this one this one outpost right here. Look at how much vision I got here. It's insane. I can see everything around it. If I delete this outpost, watch this. Well, I got to like the monk too, probably. The monk gives a lot of vision as well, but I saw so much when I built that outpost and this outpost too, so. Look at that. Look how crazy that was. It's all the way out here and stuff like that, but now, look at that. It's insane. It's insane. Oh, this castle didn't even go up. Go, doubt castle, no. Yeah, look at that. Look how much more vision I have now that I built that there. That's quite good. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, I think that kind of concludes for this video here. I'll try to get into the next thing I'm going to talk about is I'll talk about like split pushing and stuff like that. I'm not really great at it, but I'll try to provide some insight into it in the next video. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.